dreams are kind of like a pool of thought, a compilation of things your brain has archived and amalgamates into bizarre situations. For a lot of people, you might dream of strange things happening in normal locations that you're familiar with, but for others, it could be the opposite. Dreams can be a prison, nightmares holding you hostage deep inside an unescapable chasm, making you face the things that you've bottled up. But dreams can also be a sort of escape for some people, and since video games can also serve that same purpose, you're almost doubling down when you play a game about dreams. If Yume Nikki is the former, then Escaped Chasm is the latter, a game where dreams are the escape and your lonely reality is the chasm. This is an RPG Maker game developed by Temi Chang. Uh, if that name rings a bell, a lot of you probably know her from. But would you believe me if I told you that I had no idea what that even was back when I followed her? I first followed Temi years ago when she uploaded this drawing of Big the Cat to Twitter and it somehow landed in my feed and I looked at it and I was like, Wow, that's really good because Big the Cat is a character design that I do not like. I never really cared much for Big the Cat, so when I saw that somebody was able to take that design and turn it into something that was like weirdly really good and appealing to me, I knew that was the mark of a really good artist. Tyson Heiss would do the same thing years later with his Sonic Team Racing short. It's fascinating to me how designs I never really cared for can turn into something that I really do love when it's handed to the right artist. But like Tyson, Temi is most known for her supplementary work and projects that aren't her own. I mean, I even followed her to begin with because of fan art instead of something original. But over the years, I've seen her posting original content and animations that have had me more than eager to see her head a project of her own, whether it be a game or a film or, or anything that gets whatever is in her brain out there. Escaped Chasm is that project. Well, kind of, not really actually. It's more so like a little sampler more than anything. Uh, just like a short little RPG Maker game to kind of, I don't know, test the waters, learn the software, and maybe get across an idea of what she'd kind of maybe like to do someday. That said, this game is much too short to be able to digest without kind of talking about the whole thing, so expect spoilers. I highly recommend you play the game yourself before watching this video. Uh, so yeah, if you want to do that, the link to download it will be down in the description below. Uh, but yeah, for everybody else who either has played it or does not care, let's do the let's do the game. Let's play it. Oh, there's that classic RPG Maker game warning. I love how cute they always make these things. High and low-pitched audio, that's gotta be a new thing I've seen warned about. I wonder what that's gonna entail. Oh, that character! I, I recognize that. She's tweeted animations of her a bunch before, but the difference now is back then there was no context. It was just, hey, I drew a picture of a girl, but now we're gonna get to see exactly what this character she made is all about. You might also notice the options option. That's not really something I see often. Uh, this was made in RPG Maker MV, though. Same is Heartbeat, which also has a similar options menu, so that must just be an MV thing that I'm not used to seeing yet. I noticed the Always Dash option doesn't seem to work. I've played the game with it both clicked on and off, and I did not see a difference. That's weird. I guess this game doesn't really have a dash button to begin with, though, so that's probably why, I guess? Weird the options still there, though. We start with an FMV explaining a world she sees in her dreams, a world that is vast and beautiful and... Wow, wow, I have never seen animation this good in an RPG Maker game. Not only is the animation, like, super fluid, but the color, too. Oh my god. I mean, like, I've seen snippets on Twitter of works and progresses of her animations before, but when you see a full finished scene, it's kind of, like mind-blowing how good this is for, for, for like, a person making this, for one person making this, this is, oh my, I, I cannot even get over how good this looks. But, uh, yeah, once you're done drooling over that intro, the premise here is that there's this world beyond our own that this girl gets to see whenever she's dreaming, a world that she's both fascinated with and wants to be a part of, but unfortunately, when she wakes up, she realizes how confined to reality she is, and all she can do is reminisce about it and draw pictures of it. Reality for this character is pretty dull. She's home alone, her parents have left, and there's no telling when they'll be back. All she can do is wander around the house and maybe watch TV sometimes. Even the TV show had a lot of work put into it. It's not as animated as the opening, but even still, seeing this amount of work going into every last little thing in this game is pretty wild. There's a lot of full screen artwork for interacting with objects, each interaction telling us a little bit more about the character. And that kind of seems to be like the golden standard way of starting an RPG Maker game. You start them in your house or your bedroom or whatever, and you see what the objects in the room tell you about them. The one thing I did notice is that the dialogue for a lot 
lot of objects, it just tells you what the object is. It's a box, a vase, a pot of plant, a toilet, a sink. I feel like if the game is just going to tell me what I already know about the object, it doesn't really need to be there. Tell us what our character thinks about the object. For example, the shower curtains. It says she accidentally rips them a lot. Well, there you go. That's something that explores the relationship between the object and our character. And by extension, it says something about her character, even if it's something small. I really do think that holds a lot more value than just labeling things in the house. One of my favorite examples of a series figuring this out is the Silent Hill games in Silent Hill 1 and 2. Um, Harry and James usually don't say a whole lot about each object. They usually just say, oh, it's this, and they tell you what it is at face value. But Heather, in Silent Hill 3, she says things about it that tell you things about Heather, her attitude, her personality. Now, the choice in color here is something I find really interesting. It's monochromatic, but with two shades of blue instead of gray. It conveys the lifelessness of black and white, while also boasting the emotion that comes with a sedated blue. You know, because blue is sadness, loneliness, you're feeling blue. But it's not a bright blue that pops, it's a faded blue that groans and mourns. The game uses words to tell us what she thinks, but the choice in color, music, and visuals shows us how she feels. I guess this is a good spot to mention the music. Um, to match the game's artwork, they're all chiptune compositions. It sounds a lot like Final Fantasy 1's music to me. I'm not like a big music theory guy, so I probably couldn't really explain to you why it reminds me of that. Just like, I don't know, the way it sounds? The mood of it more so than anything, I guess. The music was done by Toby Fox, which is really cool because Temi's most known for helping with his game, and now here he is helping with her game. That dude's also like a frickin' modern Beethoven, so you really can't go wrong with music from him. He delivers the proper somber and melancholy vibes that this game needs. I really love how the main character's design reinforces that vibe, like those big glasses. You may as well put those tiny sad eyes under a microscope. It amplifies that hidden aura of sadness and loneliness that she carries. I mean, like seriously, you take one look at her and you know exactly how she feels. Notice how her alter ego that she dreams of doesn't have these glasses, because instead her eyes are big and expressive. It doesn't need Sherlock's magnifying glass to show us what she's hiding. Whether she knows it or not, Temi is really really good at incorporating subtle symbolism into her characters. It's also interesting how the real world is this Game Boy looking pixel art, yet her dreams are these high definition animations, as if to further heighten the idea that the world in her dreams is much more vivid and exciting than reality, and by extension that strengthens our desire to get to that world. So if you're wondering what your goal here in this game is, uh, you don't really have one that's immediately evident, you just kind of walk around the house and interact with things, and eventually triggering certain text boxes will advance the plot. One thing that really threw me off, and this is totally on me, it is not the game's fault, it's the diary. It's used for story purposes and not for saving? I am so used to these things being for saving in RPG Maker games. You actually can't save at all in this game, so don't click quit game, you'll lose all your progress. I did that by mistake and I had to start over. And that might sound alarming, like why can't you save in this game, but it's only an hour long, so you don't really need to, you can easily finish it in one sitting. So after exploring the house for a little bit, you'll get the opportunity to sleep where you'll see another dream sequence, this time a black and white scribble showing her relationship with her parents versus her relationship with the outside world. It becomes apparent when trying to leave the house that she has a lot of anxiety when it comes to the outdoors. I like that she doesn't outright refuse to leave, but rather puts it off. Maybe tomorrow. She knows she can't stay home forever. Soon after, we find this demon-looking dude in the foyer, orange in color. Immediately, you notice how much he clashes with the real world, so it's pretty evident that he's not from around here. So we're like, yo, who this? And he just says, haha, I just want to see what happens, and then disappears. Sooner than later, reality starts to fall apart. The pixels of the real world become corrupted as your house starts crumbling to pieces. The music in this part really rattles my eardrums. It's so weird to listen to with headphones on. It's like, it's like zapping my brain. This is probably what that warning was about. So we finally decide to enter our parents' room, and we find a note from our mother explaining that 
they're gone and they're not coming back. It's vague about what exactly happened to them, but it seems as if they had no choice, and it was heart-wrenching to leave their child behind. Then the demon Fricker comes back and explains the world we see in our dreams. He can send us there. In doing so, we might just be able to find our parents. But, at the same time, it would sever us of all connections to our previous life, including the memories of our parents. The girl decides to take that risk and enters that world. This really seems like it's just the beginning, but that's how the game ends. She transforms into a little demon dude and we get some parting words about how this is probably what her parents wanted. To escape a world of sadness and loneliness and turn into a werewolf and live in a cool dream world. And that is Escaped Chasm. I guess the title is pretty self-explanatory in the end. You know, the chasm being your poopy life of sadness and then you escape that even if it means you kind of escape the things that you hold dear in the process. There's also a couple of bad endings you can get as well. Walking outdoors in the world is kind of falling apart. Not a good idea. You get this ending where you shatter like a mirror. Another one you can get by not picking up this doll here, but uh, it was a really freaky surprise, so I'll let you guys find this one on your own. Be warned though, it's like, it's like scary. It's like freaky. You only get a proper credits if you get the real ending, and then after that... Huh? The, the hell is this? Oh, that's that's Temmie, right, I see, I see. And it's not just a gag, either. It's actually pretty cool. You can talk to her in-game avatar and hear her thoughts about what this whole thing is and what she'd like to do with it someday, maybe? You know, just a little test game to learn how to use RPG Maker and etc. It's kind of like she just presented a project to her class and she's like, yeah, that is my thing. Does anybody have any questions? I will answer them. Also, you're a cat. Interesting seeing a degree of uncertainty in the quality of this project, too. She even apologizes in the event that some people don't really care for the story or themes. That is bonkers. I thought the story was lovely, and the character designs really did a fantastic job of helping to get those ideas across. If it means anything, I was sort of upset seeing it end right here. It's a really good hook, and I'd love to see what comes after. This game's kind of like a Costco sample. You know, like the nice lady at the stand gives you a little cube of ham on a toothpick, and then you eat it, and it's super duper tasty so you beg your mom to buy some of that ham for you. The only difference here, though, is that the ham's kind of not made yet, so, so please don't bother anybody about this ham, because meat takes time to cook. Why am I using Costco as an analogy? I found in the game's files there's an extras folder with Escaped Chasm 2. What is, what is this? Title screen's completely blank. Okay, let's see what this is. Huh? Oh, that's okay. I, I see how it is. I, I thought it was going to be like a second chapter, but I guess we'll have to wait for that. I really do hope this project does come to fruition someday. The production value here is bonkers good. The visual and character design are well in tune with the game's story and themes, and the story and themes in question I quite liked. My only major gripe with this game is just the text thing I mentioned earlier, like how the game just tells you what you're looking at and nothing else about it. I think that could definitely be improved on. I also know the game does crash sometimes when you're watching some of the movies, but that seems to be something they already know about, so it's not its not really worth criticizing. But it is worth mentioning, just so people know about it. But yeah, if you'd like to follow the project and download the game or whatever, I'll have links down below where you can do all of that. Uh, yeah, it's really exciting to see Temi finally doing her own thing after being part of so many other people's projects, and the sample she put out was pretty dang tasty, so let's all go to Costco and get that ham the goddamn hell am I talking about? Yo, it's good. Uh, just You should follow me on Twitter and listen to me ramble about Metabots nonstop. That's all I've been doing lately. Also, in case you didn't know, uh, we also have a Patreon. Uh, there's a podcast on there that's only a dollar a month if you want to hear that. If you want to get a pizza, I recommend you call your local pizza place.